Assalamu alaikum. Hope all of you are fine. This is our uh, first lecture of the histology of the respiratory system. In this lecture, we'll discuss the anatomy of the uh, respiratory system, a brief anatomy, and then what is a respiratory epithelium, the histology of the nas nasal cavities, the paranasal air sinuses, and the olfactory epithelium, then the larynx and the trachea. The respiratory system consists of a pair of lungs and a series of the air passages that passes from and to the lungs. Within the lungs, the air passages, they branch into the smaller units or the smaller tubes until a very smallest air spaces, the alveoli, they are reached. The three principal functions of the respiratory system is to conduct the air from the outside to the respiratory unit, to filter the inspired air, and also to exchange the gases that is the oxygen is uh, transferred towards the tissues and the carbon dioxide is uh, taken up from the tissues. So exchange of gases of the carbon dioxide and the oxygen takes place at the level of the alveoli. Anatomically, the respiratory tract is uh, divided into the two portions. The upper respiratory tract, which consists of the two nasal cavities, the right and the left, separated by the nasal septum uh, and the nasopharynx. And the lower respiratory tract consists of the larynx, the trachea, the right and the left main bronchi, and then into the segmental bronchi, the lobar bronchi, the respiratory bronchioles and the and then into the alveolar ducts and the alveoli. Histologically and functionally, this uh, respiratory tract is conduct con, uh, uh, it, it, the respiratory tract has the conducting portion and a respiratory portion. So, conducting portion consists of all the components that condition the air and bring it to the lungs. Whereas the respiratory portion is the gas exchange portion and it consists of the respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts and the alveoli. So alveoli, they are the sites of the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So the respiratory tract is lined by the epithelium, which is called the respiratory epithelium. Now this respiratory epithelium is a, a special type of the epithelium, which is lining this respiratory tract and it serves to moisture and protect the air base. And it also functions as a barrier to, uh, against the potential pathogens and the foreign particulate matters and prevent the uh, in, uh, uh, infections and tissue injury by the action of the mucociliary escalators. This respiratory epithelium is actually a pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. So as you know that pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, as the name suggests the pseudostratified epithelium that all, it consists of different type of the cells, which are all are resting on the basement membrane, but the cells, all the cells, they do not reach the apical surface. So they have the nuclei at the different levels, which gives its uh, appearance of the pseudostratified. The ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium or the respiratory epithelium consists of the following type of the cells that is the tall columnar cells is, uh, which are the ciliated cells and the majority of the cells they are the tall columnar cells uh, which are ciliated. Then there are the goblet cells, the goblet cells which secretes the mucus and they are, are filled uh, with the mucus and the uh, um, uh, mucus and the uh, glycoproteins and they do not take up the stain. 
and then there are the short basal cells which are present in uh, near the basement membrane uh, the brush cells uh, with the uh, small uh, small microvilli and then there are the small granule cells so these are the types of the cells which are present in the respiratory epithelium then uh, uh, below is the lamina propria the lamina propria consists of the uh, glands and you can see here they are uh, uh, the highly uh, highly vascular lamina propria and this uh, serum mucus glands they are now you can see here the ciliated uh, tall columnar cells and uh, they spread the mucus which is secreted by the goblet cells you know, over to the surface of the epithelium and also the cilia of the uh, tall columnar cells they beat in a rhythmic fashion and they entrap the uh, dust particles and any other foreign particle uh, particle and uh, ha helps to protect the epithelium against the pathogens uh, the short basal cells which are present in between these uh, cells they rest on the basement membrane and do not reach the apical surface the short basal cells are actually the stem cells and the other type of the cells they can uh, uh, generate from the sh uh, short basal cells and they respond to the injury uh, the goblet cells which we have discussed as they secrete the mucus then there are the uh, brush cells with the microvilli and uh, they are actually the chemosensory uh, uh, the receptors and then there are the uh, uh, small granule cells the small granule cells they are actually like the enteroendocrine cells of the uh, gastro uh, intestinal system and they belong to the neuroendocrine system the short basal cells uh, as we have said they are nearly cuboidal and they have some ability to differentiate into the other cell types found within the epithelium and they respond to the injury now the nasal cavities the nasal cavities uh, or the chambers they are divided into three regions the nasal vestibule the respiratory region and the olfactory region the nasal vestibule is a small dilated space of the nasal cavity which is uh, just inside the nostril and it is lined by the uh, skin then is the respiratory portion or the respiratory region which is the largest part and inferior two third of the nasal cavities it is lined by the respiratory mucosa that is it is lined by the respiratory epithelium then is the olfactory region the olfactory region is located at the apex upper one third and uh, of each nasal cavity and it is lined by the special uh, epithelium which is called the olfactory epithelium so this portion is the vestibule the whole portion which consists of the uh, middle and inferior concha it is uh, the respiratory portion or the respiratory region and the superior part the superior concha and the roof is the uh, uh, olfactory region lined by the olfactory epithelium now the vestibule of the nasal cavity uh, the nasal vestibule it forms the uh, part of the external nose and com communicates anteriorly with the external environment it is lined by the uh, portion of the skin and the small hair, the, the hair they are present here which are called the vibrissae and it is lined by the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium now these small hairs or the the vibrissae they entrap the large particulate matter and before it is carried to the air stream uh, to the rest of the nasal cavity uh, this area or the vestibule it also has the sebaceous glands and the secretions assist in the entrapment of the particulate matter uh, posteriorly the vestibule it ends uh, and where it ends the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium it becomes thinner and a transition uh, to the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium or the respiratory epithelium in this region takes place 
and at this side the sebaceous glands they are also absent now the paranasal air sinuses there are uh, two uh, frontal air sinuses the two maxillary air sinuses the ethmoidal air sinuses all these uh, uh, paranasal air sinuses they help into the uh, uh, phonation of the voice and uh, they make the skull light uh, so uh, they are lined by the epithelium respiratory epithelium uh, but it, this respiratory epithelium is thin as compared to the respiratory epithelium of the other tract it has the few goblet cells and the few glands in the lamina propria the inflammation of these paranasal air sinuses which results into the sinusitis and the chronic obstruction uh, of uh, can uh, lead to the obstruction of their drainage orifices which uh, they open into the middle meatuses of the nose now the olfactory epithelium which is uh, uh, lining the olfactory region that is we have uh, these are the uh, uh, conchas which uh, we uh, in the lateral wall of the nose the superior concha the middle concha and the inferior concha so this superior concha uh, or the roof of the nasal cavity it is lined by the olfactory epithelium now this olfactory epithelium it is upside down that is this is the uh, cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone you can see here which is forming the roof of the nasal cavity the cribriform plate of the ethmoid uh, bone this is the sphenoidal air sinus and you can uh, see that this cribriform ethmoidal uh, plate uh, separates the uh, nasal cavity from the cranial cavity and you can see here the brain in the cranial cavity so this cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone it has the numerous openings uh, they, they, it is a sieve like and therefore it is called the cribriform cribriform means sieve like so it has numerous uh, uh, pores or the uh, uh, pores in it which uh, are the uh, which form the passages for the olfactory nerves so this olfactory epithelium it is upside down so this is epithelium and uh, this is the lamina propria now this uh, olfactory epithelium and this is uh, showing you the uh, mucus layer which is spreading over to the roof of the nasal cavity so you can see here that this is uh, this area is uh, pro projected like this and this uh, cribriform plate which is separating it from the uh, cranial cavity now this uh, olfactory epithelium consists of um, various type of the cells uh, now these uh, yellow color cells uh, you can see here they are the olfactory neurons and these olfactory neurons they are actually the bipolar neurons and these bipolar neurons they have the sensory uh, hair receptors uh, over to their one end and then uh, they are, are the nerve endings at their other end and these uh, nerve endings they all join together which are actually the axons of the olfactory neurons and they form the olfactory nerves so smaller olfactory nerves 20 to 30 in number they passes through the cribriform plate uh, uh, and then they reach into the olfactory bulb into the cranial cavity and the synapse so these olfactory neurons they are actually the first uh, order neurons and then they synapse in the olfactory bulb and from there the projection neurons they passes the sensations olfact all sense of olfaction to the uh, through the olfactory tract to the olfactory area so uh, these uh, olfactory hair cells which are actually the receptors they will sense the odor molecules in the nasal cavity and they will take these sensations from uh, to these uh, olfactory nerves to the olfactory uh, bulb then another type of the cells they are the tall columnar cells which are the supporting cells they are also called the sustentacular cells or the supporting cells 
so they are uh, uh, supporting the olfactory neurons and also providing them with the nutrition then there is a uh, short basal cells which are embedded in between the these uh, tentacular cells and they are resting on the basement membrane so you can uh, 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 understand that this is the basement membrane and this is upside down epithelium so the base they are resting on the basement membrane and the short basal cells they are similar to the uh, respiratory epithelium are the uh, stem cells and they respond to the injury and the other type of the cells they can be regenerated from this basal cells then uh, in the lamina propria there are the olfactory glands they are present which are called the uh, bowman's glands and they have their openings uh, or through the uh, these uh, glands uh, they open up uh, uh, onto the surface of the epithelium into the nasal cavity so these olfactory glands they uh, secrete the uh, mucus and they uh, spread this mucus over the epithelial layer so that the odor molecules they can be become a, uh, uh, have a solvent uh, to mix with these uh, the mucus and so that the olfactory hair cells they can sense these uh, or they can receive the stimuli of the uh, olfaction So this is a photomicrograph of the olfactory epithelium uh, showing you this uh, layer of the mucus over the epithelium in the nasal cavity uh, and these are the small olfactory hair cells, the uh, tall columnar supporting cells or the sustentacular cells and then there are the olfactory neurons you can see here the short basal cells and this is the lamina propria. So olfactory receptor cells, they are the bipolar neurons that uh, are lie in the thickness of the epithelium and they enter the central nervous system. The supporting or the sustentacular cells, they are the similar to the tall columnar cells and they are uh, providing the mechanical and the metabolic support to the olfactory receptor cells. And they synthesize and secrete the odorant binding proteins also. The short basal cells, they are the stem cells from which the new olfactory receptor cells and supporting cells, they can differentiate. The brush cells, they are the small cell type that occur in the respiratory uh, epithelium. Now the larynx. So uh, from the uh, nasal cavity or the nasopharynx, the air is passed to the larynx which is the sound box and consists of the different cartilages and this larynx between the pharynx and the trachea is uh, reinforced by the hyaline cartilage and there is a, a tongue shaped flap of the elastic cartilage which is called the epiglottis and it uh, uh, co uh, covered with the mucous membrane and attached to the root of the tongue. It projects obliquely upwards behind the tongue and the hyoid bone. So you can see that this is the hyoid bone. Uh, and it has the lingual surface, uh, uh, which, uh, and, uh, uh, which is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium, non-keratinized. And it has the, the uh, this uh, part, uh, oropharynx part, which is uh, the aligned by the uh, respiratory epithelium so the larynx uh, has the vestibular uh, folds which are covered with the respiratory epithelium and the vocal folds uh, which are uh, uh, covered with the stratified squamous epithelium so you can see here that this is the uh, stratified squamous epithelium and there is a transition to the respiratory epithelium Now the uh, trachea, the larynx leads uh, to the uh, uh, windpipe or the uh, uh, tube which is made up of the cartilages rings, the C-shaped cartilages rings which is called the trachea. Now you can see here the section of the trachea here. Now this is the uh, trachea and 
uh, anteriorly and the posteriorly uh, to the trachea lies the esophagus. Now this uh, you can see here the trachea uh, consists of these key-shaped cartilages rings. They, there are 15 to 20 cartilages rings which makes up these trachea or the windpipe. And these C-shaped cartilages rings, uh, they are open uh, 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 at the uh, posteriorly and they are bridged by a muscle which is a smooth muscle and is called the trachealis muscle. So these C-shaped cartilages rings, they keep the trachea patent or open for the air uh, constant flow of the air. The trachea leads uh, to uh, the right and the left, uh, uh, divides into the right and the left main bronchi and then they enter into the substance of the lung which divides into the segmental bronchi, the bar bronchi and further uh, the division continues until a smaller unit alveoli they are reached which are the respiratory units. So we will discuss the structure of the uh, histological structure of the trachea. Now the mucosa of the uh, trachea consists of the epithelium and the lamina propria. The epithelium is again the respiratory epithelium which is the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with the goblet cells and all the cells are the same which we have discussed in the respiratory epithelium. The lamina propria is uh, thin with the elastic fibers and all the components of the connective tissue of the uh, which are present here, the highly vascular and the nerve supply and also the lymphocytes. The submucosa of the trachea consists of the loose areolar connective tissue and uh, the, the glands which are the simple branched tubulo alveolar seromucous glands. And the submucosa also consists of the C-shaped highline cartilage rings. So you can see here that this is the hyaline cartilage and they are lined by the, both sides with the perichondrium and uh, it has dense connective tissue between the rings. So on gap on the posterior side is filled with the, the fibrous uh, fibroelastic connective tissue and the muscle that is the trachealis muscle as we have discussed. Then is the uh, Adventitia. The adventitia is the loose collagen fibers and consists of the uh, blood vessels and the autonomic nerves. So the, you can identify the section of the trachea with the uh, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium the, uh, and its C-shaped highline cartilage rings. Uh, so there are uh, various uh, uh, tracheal diseases and the conditions uh, like the choking. Uh, the choking can occur in the children or, or the adults when the bolus of the food passes into the trachea. Uh, the tracheotomy is a surgical procedure which is performed on the neck to open the direct airway through an incision in the trachea. Uh, the tracheomalacia is the weakening of the tracheal rings. Then the tracheobronchial injury is the perforation of the trachea or the bronchi. Then uh, munier cohn syndrome, it causes the abnormal enlargement of the trachea. Uh, the transplant of the, uh, the trachea uh, occurred in 2008 by, in a Colombian woman uh, so that her body would not reject the transplant. Uh, this is a diagram showing you the, the respiratory tract epithelium. Uh, that is the respiratory epithelium consisting of the ciliated columnar, tall columnar cells. And you can see here that they, uh, uh, how they are wave, uh, beat, uh, moving in a wave-like fashion. Whereas this is uh, showing you the in, injury infection of these, uh, uh, the epithelium, which leads to the inflammation and the <clears throat> engorgement of the cilia. So this, uh, this smoking is injurious to health. It can lead to the various uh, cancers and uh, the ep ep chronic smoking can le uh, lead to the metaplasia of the respiratory epithelium into the stratified squamous epithelium. So uh, different type of the chronic obstructive diseases can take place because of the 
uh, injury to the respiratory epithelium by the smoking. So if you want to know about uh, the cancers which are caused by the smoking, so then continue smoking. Thank you.